We welcome to the show Dave Barker. So how's it going? Well, Chris, listen, man, you know, I mean, um, you know, give thanks, you know, I mean, uh, life is fine, and I mean, life is good, and I say life is good, life comes first, and I mean, I'm not too bad, I, I, I have life, and I have health and strength, you know, and uh, also a lovely family, and one and two good friends, you know. And you're also enjoying your music. Well, I try to, I try to. You're performing at uh, the Folkestone Scar Festival with the Goldmaster All-Stars on Saturday the 11th of August. Yeah, Are you looking I'm, forward to it? Yes, I am. I am. You know, I am. And uh, uh, I hope uh, that it will be, I mean, I mean, actually, it should be a good night, you know. And I also hope that uh, the place will be crammed with people who also enjoy the music, you know. Two of your most famous songs are Monkey Spanner and Double Barrel. But what's your favourite? Well, um, I have a few because uh, I have one that I also did with the Whalers. I mean, well, actually, I did a couple with the Whalers. Uh, and, uh, this one in particular is called uh, Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying. Oh, I love that song. Okay. How are you, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Also, with um, Double Barrel, was you surprised how big it got at the time? Yes, I was um, extremely surprised because, uh, you see, I did, I thought it did um, Double Barrel uh, as a one-off, you know. Um, It was just a quick thing, which uh, I went into the studio with uh, the late uh, Winston Riley and his brother, and of course, because of course the the, the track was already made uh, with uh, by Ansel and Sly Dunbar. You know, so I mean, uh, we just had to go in the studio to put my voice on, and uh, we went into uh, the studio, uh, Joe Gibbs recording studio, and. Uh, you know, eventually I put my voice on, and uh, I mean that was that. You know, I had I had forgotten about it completely. And when I heard that uh, it was heading for the charts, see, I'm saying, no man, that's crazy. You know, you really wasn't expecting it. I wasn't. No, no, I wasn't. So I mean, actually, it took me completely by surprise. And I bet with other songs you've done, you probably thought, well, this is going to do well. And Well, oh, I tell you, Chris, for real, man. Yeah, for real. I mean, I mean, it always happens. Well, I mean, uh, always, I would say always uh, at times hap- uh, happens in that way, you know. The ones you expect to do well don't, and the ones you least uh, think about, those are the ones that uh, somehow make the mark. Yeah, and Double Barrel definitely did. Also, yes, with Monkey did. Spanner, what can you tell us about that when you did that song? Well, Monkey Spanner, Monkey Spanner, uh, we went into the recording studio again uh, because, I mean, both both stuff, uh, both tracks uh, weren't voiced at the, the same time. Uh, so we went back in the studio. I mean, this time it was a dynamic recording studio. And uh, the track was played to me, and uh, you know the vibes. You know, I go, I, I go off vibes, and uh, the track was played to me, and I just, uh, I mean, the vibes that came to me was just um, uh, simply, dum 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 dum. This is a heavy, heavy monster sound. It it was like that right there in the middle, and still moving right on. And I went right through it. I mean, it was a vibe, you know. Great vibe. Just a vibe, man, and uh, of course, uh, I mean, again, I thought uh, not much of it, and uh, it turned out to be uh, something special. Yeah, it definitely did. You know. So, when was your first big break? Well, I mean, I, yeah, well, I mean, uh, da, 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 da. my first big break, uh, Chris, I think, uh, came when I... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd, I never, I never really check it as a big break. Uh, um, but what, 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 what I can say is that uh, uh, the first time 
I was really hoping to the public uh, was when we came here. You know, we came here on tour, uh, myself and Nancy Collins and a couple of guys uh, from the band. You know, and um, and we came here and, and we started to uh, tour the top-ranked clubs. I mean, in those days, they had those massive top-ranked clubs, you know. And we would tour the top-ranked clubs. Sometimes we would be doing uh, two or three shows per night, you know, rushing from one place to the next. You know, and, I mean, it dawned on me then, you know, how much people really loved this reggae music. They did. Yeah. You know, and uh, it was really a surprise. I mean, even um, going to uh, uh, Top of the Pops, I mean, we had to rush to go to Top of the Pops. Uh, and, I mean, it was like... Uh, it it was like I was in a it, it it was like I was in some kind of dream, you know. I mean, it was all I don't know, man. It was these things. I mean, it it just came suddenly on me. Ah, no, you know. And uh, I mean, I mean, um, at uh, top of the pops, I got the chance to meet to see uh, guys like Cliff Richard and um, and uh, Rod Stewart and all those guys who whose music. Uh, you know, we know well in J Jamaica because those type of music were played a lot in J Jamaica at that time. So it was just one big, uh, everything was just happening at that time. And uh, then it sort of dawned on the man, these people really love this music and uh, they really check for the music that I do. You know, so I'm saying, wow, man, this feels good. Of course it does. And I think, well, all over the world, people love ska and reggae, don't they? Yeah, they do, man. They do. They do because um, being various places, man, the mass of people I see, you know, in um, stadiums and clubs, you know, everyone just seems to go for the reggae music, man, and they get into a vibe where, where at times they even jump on stage and start dancing along with you and all them things, man. They go crazy. But you can't help yourself, can you? You can't, you know, you can't just stand there. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you just can't. I mean, I mean, you know, like um, the, the creator of the soul, uh, my friend Bob, you know, I mean, and I mean, I mean, uh, um, also quite a few uh, um, other recording artists, uh, you know, they say, uh, you know, the reggae, Beat is like your heartbeat, you know, which which I find is true. It is a heartbeat, and it comes from the depths of your being, you know, which is internationally. It's it's an international beat. Who inspired you when you was younger to become a singer? Was there any other singers that you thought I'd like to be like him? Yeah, Chris. Uh, as a small child coming up in uh, Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, I used to um, listen to the radio a lot, and uh, I was told by my my mom uh, that from from a very and a quite a few and you know my mom and my uh, and my um, auntie that uh, from a very young age, um, I'd say about uh, 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 five uh, five four five of age. You know, I would go, you know, when they take me out uh, to their friend's place, at times I would leave them all sitting out on the porch, uh, chatting away, and I would leave them and go inside the house, go in the bedroom, and turn the radio on. And just sit there listening to the music on the radio. Who would you, you listen know? to? Well, at that time, I didn't really, I can't really remember who I listened to, but the point I'm trying to make is, uh, as I as I grew, as I got older and older, I mean, as I got got older, I started to listen to uh, and pay attention to guys like uh, Chuck Jackson. Hey, the day now, I will hear you say, you know, and uh, and and of course the Drifters. Oh, yeah. They have a neon light so bright oh. on Broadway, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, Clyde McFadden, uh, and uh, guys like. Uh, Garnet Silk, 
And of course, the temptations, you oh, know, right. if it's love that you're running from, there's no hiding place. You can't run, you can't hide. You know, when the Smokey Robinson and the Miracles? Tracks of my tears, yeah. Yeah, man. And of course, uh, the late uh, Jackie Wilson. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and I mean the impressions with uh, with uh, Curtis May Mayfield, the late Curtis Mayfield, and Mr. Jerry Butler. He don't love you. Yeah, great music. Like I love you, you know. <laughs> and then came along Mr. James Brown, you know. So and of course Tom Jones. Yeah, man, and uh, this other guy, the late uh, Matt uh, Monroe. Oh, Matt Monroe. Born free, as free as the wind blows. <laughs> you know, and oh yeah, it's a, it's really a wide range of artists. You know, I I I listen to a wide range of, of artists, and uh, I mean James Brown. I mean James Brown grabbed me immensely. Mm. Because, I mean, James Brown came with a lot of feel, a lot of feel. You know, songs like, please, 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 baby, please don't go. Please, 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 baby, please. You know, feeling. He had a lot of feeling, James Brown. Oh, man, yes. and uh, He was all heart and soul, wasn't he? Oh, yes, he was. He was. He was. You know, one day... I mean, it's amazing because, I mean, at that time, I found myself starting to sing just like them. Hmm. Yeah, I did. You know, I used to sing like uh, these guys, you know. Uh, and uh, at one point, you know, at one point, I said to myself, Dave, okay, 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 you, you, you can sing like all these guys now. You 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 need to find your own sound. You need to find you. How do you sound? And of course, with that, I with that uh, uh, something told me that um, I need to get into myself. And w when I sing, I I should sing from how I feel, from the depths of my being. Sing sing how I feel. If I feel sad. I sing sad. If I feel happy, I sing happy. Express. You know, it's all to do with uh, expression. And you find that with a lot of reggae artists, that they started off singing soul music and then they yeah. moved on to reggae. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You see, and, and I mean, what, what a lot of people also uh, say to me at times when I go from place to place, if I let people will uh, approach me and say, Dave, man, you know, you sing... You seem to sing the, the, the reggae music with soul, you know, because I had the soul to it. Well, soul's you know? great as well, isn't it? So Exactly. Oh, man, it's so cool. Soul and reggae. Oh, man, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And, of course, you know, um, at the time, I'm, I'm really glad, and I give thanks and praises, that I was... Uh, born at the time I uh, did because uh you know in in them times uh you know uh, the 60s uh the 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 late 60s coming up into the 70s man you had some fantastic stuff yeah you know and i mean i mean the music was so rich you know the music was so rich and everyone was so immensely uh cre creative you know i mean i would just then I would just swim. The, mu the music to me was like one big, beautiful ocean. You know, I, I just swam. I just swam in it. I mean, that music from the 60s and the 70s is timeless. It, it is exactly. Exactly. Priceless and timeless. Thanks yeah. a lot for joining us on the show, Dave. Hi, Chris. Man, it's, uh, it's a pleasure, man, and also a uh, honor, you know. <laughs> Thanks a lot.